And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success Morning Coffee. Hopefully we don't not have the technical difficulties that we had last week and things sound all right. We'll wait until see if Nikki hops in here and tells me if my sound is correct. It gets kind of old every once in a while. We have those technical difficulties, but we just keep working through them. And I need to go through and adjust the the sound anyway, but we'll get there. How's it sound, Nikki? Hopefully it sounds all right. Um, before we get started, Shaping Success is brought to you. Morning Coffee is brought to you by Castle and Cook. Good deal. It sounds good. Castle Cook Mortgage, if you're looking to uh, refinance or purchase a new home in the Boise, Idaho, or Oregon area, Idaho or Oregon, Sean Loveland is licensed in both Oregon and Idaho. Give him a call, 208-447-7205. Rates are going down. Um, they were pretty high for a while, and it's made a difference where if you refinance, if you got that higher rate, you know, six months, a year ago, you can get a little bit better rate later on. Michelle, good morning. If you guys haven't been here before, we do this every morning. I do a little bit of talk and sometimes it gets repetitive and talking about some of the things that I'm going through in my life and how um, the tools and things that I am using to keep moving forward. Who am I? I'm just a guy who picked up a microphone about four years ago. It's funny. I just saw a post on Facebook and saw, um, post of what it was before. And if you don't know, a friend of mine and I started to try and do this podcast four years ago. Um, this is year five, like season five. I call it, I just, they're not really seasons they're just years is what they are. So, um, but the first, the first episode dropped about four years ago. Um, this time when it took a lot of time for me to try and figure out how to do a podcast, which isn't that hard if you're wondering. Um, but we got together and, and we started to do it and it was a little bit different. I was working on trying to kind of promote small businesses within the community and realized that I just wanted to share success stories with people. And that's what I did. So it kind of went from doing interviews, um, with people locally, um, had some pretty cool guests on my first real big one was with Mark Simo, the creator of no fear, trust me, vodka. And then through a series of events, you know, I kind of, DM some people on Instagram, got Jake Rose, the lead singer of New Medicine, Chris Henderson, lead guitarist of Three Doors Down, Rob Bantley played for the Giants, just people here and there, really cool people to talk to. And, and then I just uh, started interviewing people and found that a lot of times um, people don't get to know who I am. And through that process, I've moved about twice and was building this studio. And now I have my own studio and I'm able to just kind of pop out. I was thinking about this morning. It's like, I get up at 4.15, I go in and I and have, you know, make coffee, sit down for a little bit, kind of reflect on what happened yesterday and think about like what I'm going to talk about today. And then I get to stand up and walk outside and go open a door, go into the garage, come around, come outside into the studio and sit down and just fire this thing up and talk. And that's what's kind of cool about it. I didn't have that opportunity before because in the previous house that we were in, there, it was a rental. So we sold our house to build this house, but we had a two year transition where we we're trying to find a lot and build the house. And I was able to just come in here or, you know, I was, I was able to have a place to record, but it was like in the middle of everything. My daughter's room was over in that corner. Our bedroom was over there and I was in this bonus area. So it wasn't very private. It wasn't really like a dedicated recording area. So like, if I wanted to wake up like I'm doing right now and come out and just record, I couldn't because my wife is still in bed. My kids are still sleeping and now I can do that. And it's kind of a cool thing for me to be able to do that for myself because I can just come out here and, and do a podcast. Um, but I was talking to someone yesterday and kind of what I want to talk to you about today is it's interesting how, you know, people talk to me. I talk to a lot of people like I, I have connections with people who make me feel better. I was hearing Robert, uh, Yosaka talking to someone on a TikTok video this morning talking about how there's two types of people in this world. There, there are people who are, you know, he has this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and he, he has two dads. He has his rich dad who is not even really his dad, but he's someone that he worked with, a friend of his in school. Um, his dad gave him a job when he was younger, and he worked with him, and he was a very successful entrepreneur. And then he had his poor dad who was a college instructor who 
you know, just kind of worked for the man and did, you know, did what society said he needed to do. And so he talks about that being rich dad, poor dad, where if you're going to work for yourself your whole life, you know, or, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard, but there are things that you can do to actually be, you know, monetarily rich. And it takes taking risks. A lot of times, if you ask, if you listen to him talk, he'll tell you that he doesn't really spend any of his own money. He spends other people's money, which is, sounds kind of weird, but when you really dive into what it is, that's, it's, it's how people make money. And then his poor dad, who was a college instructor who basically made a salary, made a wage, had benefits, had all that stuff, but ended up with nothing, you know, when it was all said and done. And the other guy's building assets instead of liabilities where his, his poor dad's building, building liabilities. Anyway, he was talking about how his poor dad would sit around in, if something was wrong, like he needed money or whatever, he would just sit there and just sulk and I'm a man and I'm supposed to solve this myself and I'm going to figure this out and I have to fix this. That's all I'm going to do. Like sit there in his corner and try and figure it out on his own. Right. And then his poor dad, if he had a problem, he would try to solve the problem by being around people who have solved the problem. So he would go talk to his lawyer. He would go talk to his banker. He would go talk to people who have been successful and build that up that way. And that's how he would figure out what the questions and what the answers are. And so I've surrounded myself with people like that. That's been kind of my, my last four years, finding people who are trying to do some of the things that I want to do and then using them as a tool to help me be successful. And then they're gleaning information from me as well. And I was talking to someone yesterday and they're like, you know, it's funny because I'm, I'm working on something right now. And they're like, you have been working on this for like six months now, but you haven't found the answer that you're looking for. You haven't found the solution, but you continue to look for a backup plan. You have something else in line, something else that you're working for, and you figure out another way to make it happen. And that's where I'm at. That's what I'm trying to do. And, and that's how I am. And I, and I came back to this. I don't know who said it, but I saw it, you know, um, failure to plan is a plan to fail, right? So if you're not planning for what you're doing, you're gonna fail. And then if you fail and you don't have a backup plan, guess what happens? You're actually, you're going to fail. You, you might quit. You might not try to keep doing it. And so when you're working through these problems that you have and you're trying to figure out a way to make something happen, if you don't have a backup plan, you're not planning, you know? And it doesn't mean that you're always gonna need the backup plan, but you should have you should have something in place knowing that, hey, if this doesn't work out, what am I going to do? And I'll figure it out. Because if the, if the goal is that important to you to get it done, you're going to find a way to make it happen. And, and that's where I'm at right now. It's like, it's been a struggle trying to figure these things out. But I'm in the process. I'm in the middle of it. I'm in, I'm in the trenches right now trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And that's what I would say to you is if there's something that you're trying to do, if there is a goal that you have, if you're trying to be successful, if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to do anything, you know, maybe you want to go back to school. Maybe you want to become a doctor. Maybe you want to finish college. Maybe you want to, there's just these things that you have to do. You have to be willing to just kind of figure out a way to make it happen. And that's, that's what I have done with my life in the last four years that is different than before. Instead of just going to work and working for someone and just going through the motions, because that's what a lot of people do. Like, if you're happy, that's fine. If you're content, if that's the way that you want to be, then continue to do that. But if you want to be more, if you want to keep moving forward, if you want to build up to something more, then you have to just be willing to keep stacking and keep doing it. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, my friend. Um, so... That's what I'm, that's what I'm here to tell you. Like, we're going to sit here and we're going to act like this for me, like this podcast, right? I mentioned, you know, this is the fifth year that I have done this. Um, I'm going on five years right now. Like this is the start of the fifth year. We're 23, 24 episodes into it, which is different, right? Because m my first focus was, well, I'm going to do a weekly show, right? I'm going to do a weekly interview. That was what it was. That was my focus. And, and if you go and you watch the previous things, you'd know that I didn't do a show every week because I couldn't find a guest every week. And then I got to the point, well, if I don't have a guest, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that I can't still do it. 
I'll just do it by myself and I'll talk about something like this. And then last year, you know, I walk, I worked through it. And I'm like, I'm going to do more solo episodes because I want people to know more about who I am, what I'm doing. Right. And then I realized that I have a lot to offer and I have more to say than, you know, and people are listening. Right. And it may not be a lot. Like someone posted the other day, it's like, you get 45 downloads an episode. In this, in this Buzzsprout, Buzzsprout podcast group that I'm in. And, and they're like, but think about that. That is 45 people that you had in an audience that you wouldn't have had. It's just like TikTok. I've got 22.3K followers. And if 250 people are seeing my videos, that's 250 people who didn't see my videos before. So things are happening. And we, we always want instant gratification. Like we would love for something to go viral. I'd love for this episode to get, you know, thousands of des- downloads. It's not going to happen, but that's what I would hope. That's what, that's what I would love to happen. But you have to break it down and go, you know what? I'm still reaching someone. There are still people who rely on me to be here every day. There are people who DM me when I don't do an episode, which is, is a struggle sometimes. It's a struggle to get up and do this every single morning sometimes when you don't feel great. I mean, I, for the last two weeks, I've been working. I've had something. You know, I've been sick with... Um, some sort of sinus issue, which is finally going away. Thank goodness. Because last two nights I was able to sleep through the night, which when you miss sleep, it sucks. It's terrible. Um, but people rely on you. And then it's not easy to go. I'm not going to do this because now I'm thinking about all those other people who are waiting for me to be there. And then they'll DM me like, are you okay? Is everything all right? Did you not do it this morning? What's going on? And you know, there's times where I just don't feel like doing it, but that's okay. You can take a break. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but I appreciate each and every one of you. And I, and I just want to encourage you that like, if there's something that you really want to do, you're going to find a way. Don't quit. Find someone who has done it. Okay. Find someone who has been successful in what it is. And that's kind of where I, where I've been. Like I've, I've, modeled my shows and the things that I say off of certain people because I really believe in what they're doing. I really believe in what they're saying. And I'll go to like when I first started podcasting, I would read books on it. I would talk to people who were doing it. I would go and listen to other podcasts and see what they're doing. My my good friend Jay that, you know, we do one drink Wednesday every Wednesday. And I talk to you every single day. All we're talking about well, we talk about life stuff too, but a lot of times like we're talking about, well, this is working. Why don't I try this? What else is there that we can do? And we're trying to work through it every single day. And I met him through podcasting and that's it. And he's around a bunch of other people. We've made some really good connections. One drink Wednesday, one of the things that was really, it's us sitting at a virtual bar talking, just having a drink because he lives in Arizona. I live in Idaho and he's a good friend of mine. And I want to, you know, it's nice to go over and have sit down at a bar with Jay on Instagram. It's our, it's our virtual bar and have a conversation and have a good time. And, you know, it's, it's fun to do that. Well, we've always wanted people from these liquor companies like, you know, say whistle pig or something like that to send us bottles. And so we can talk about them on one drink Wednesday. Hey, this is what we're drinking tonight. And this is what we're doing. And, and lo and behold, we've had a couple of, a couple of uh, distilleries say, Hey, you know, we'd like, we might send you something and this is what we're going to do. And when it shows up, it's great. It's exciting because we're going to do that and we're going to have that. So what's up, Gabby? Good to see you. Um, find those who are successful in your area and interested in pick their brain. Exactly. That's what it is. So that's, that's the story today. Okay. That's what I suggest you do. If there is something that you want to do, find those people, surround yourself with them, and pick their brain about how they've done it. If they're successful, they've been there in some way. If they're not successful, what are some of the things that they've done? Because you got to take the good with the bad. There's going to be things that happen for good, and there are going to be things that happen for bad, and you have to learn how to deal with that. And like I said, a, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. Okay? So go out there today. That's the message. Find those people. Make those connections. It's going to be a tough road sometimes, but it's really worth it in the end. Okay. So have an awesome day. We'll catch you tomorrow. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success. 